Hello and welcome to today. Uh, today is Tell Your Story. I'm going to share some stories with you that are from around the world. People used to tell stories to try to explain everyday things, things they didn't understand. They would tell a story that maybe would make some sense of some of the common things that were happening in their world. One of the stories I want to share with you, I shared back in March, but I would like to share it again because it's a great story from a land of Ireland. Now, Ireland is on the other side of the world. Uh, if there's anyone that wants to say hi, you can go ahead and uh, chime in and say hi. But we are going to talk about stories from our different parts of the world, but the first one I want to share with you is a traditional Irish story, and it's a fun one. It's one of my favorites to share with you. It is called The Very Hungry Leprechaun. So once upon a time, in the land of Ireland, people didn't have anything to eat. And there was a man, his name was Fitzpatrick O'Mallory. All he had to eat was dandelion soup. Does that sound very good? It wasn't very good, but that's all he had to eat. Every day, he'd go out and pick dandelions, and he'd boil them in water and make his soup, and that's what he had to eat. But he knew that if he ever would see a leprechaun, if he caught him, that leprechaun would have to give him his pot of pot of gold or do some magic for him. Well, one day he's out in the field and guess what he sees? That's right, he sees a leprechaun. Now this is a skinny, scrawny leprechaun named Tippery. He sneaks up on him and he catches him and he goes, oh, lucky, you're little rascal. I caught you fair and square. And he goes, you better give me your pot of gold. He goes, oh, but I don't have a pot of gold. He goes, all right, and you better do some magic for me. Oh, I can do magic. But I'm so hungry, I can't do magic when I'm hungry. Well, Fitzpatrick took one look at that skinny, scrawny leprechaun, and he did feel sorry for him, so he says, All right, I'll take you back to my place, and I'll give you some soap, and then you'll do some magic for me. <laughs> okay, I'll try. So he takes him back, and he gives him some soup. Not too bad. Mmm, pretty good. Well, after he had enough soup, Fitzpatrick said, all right, I said, little rascal. He goes, you better do some magic for me. Why do you keep your magic? Do you keep it in your hat? No, I don't keep it in my hat. I said, do you keep it in your shoes? No, no, I don't keep it in my shoes. Where do you keep your magic then? I keep it in my little finger here. Well, in that case, I want you to put your finger into that pot and stir it until it turns into gold. Oh, but that's a tough one, but I'll try. He puts his finger in the pot and he stirs. It starts to shake, it starts to sparkle, and out of that pot go frogs! You got frogs all over my kitchen! Well, that made Fitzpatrick mad. He got his broom and he swept all those frogs out of the kitchen and into the front yard, and he picked up that leprechaun. He goes, you little rascal, you tricked me. You got frogs all over my kitchen. He goes, oh, I didn't trick you. I'm just so hungry. I can't do magic when I'm hungry. He says, all right, we'll go get some more dandelions and we'll make some more soup, and then you'll do some magic for me. Okay. So they go out and they pick more dandelions and they boil those dandelions into the water. And they stir and they stir. And he says, All right, here's some more soup. Mm. He goes, All right, you've had some more soup. He goes, Now I want you to put both those tangles into the pot and start turn, turns into gold. Oh, okay. He goes, Well, that's exhausting, but I'll try. So he puts both fingers in the pot and he stirs and he stirs. That pot starts to shake, it starts to sparkle, and out of that pot comes more frogs. This time they're flying through the air, they're going out the window, they're going into the living room, into the bedroom, and into the bathroom, and one of them flies through the air and lands on Fitzpatrick's head. You little rascal, you've got frogs all over my kitchen, and frogs all over my house, and now you've got frogs all over me. He goes, you better start doing some magic and do it for me now. And he goes, oh, but I'm so hungry. <coughs> He goes, all right, I'll give you one more chance. Just one more chance, and then you'll do some magic for me. Okay. So they're out picking dandelions. And as they're picking dandelions to make the soup, Fitzpatrick looks over and he sees that the leprechaun is picking up the dandelions and eating them. Mmm, they're delicious. Well, that made Fitzpatrick mad. He grabbed that leprechaun and he says, all right, I see you. You've been eating this whole time. You better do some magic for me. I want you to... Run around and touch the rock and turn it into gold. Hi, that's a tough one, but I can try. <coughs> I'm 
so he runs around and he touches that rock. Cha-ching, cha-ching, cha-ching. And something magically starts to happen. That rock, it starts to wiggle, it starts to glow, and it grows faster and faster and faster and faster until it turns into. Look at the world, look at that. I don't know what that is. It made Fitzpatrick so mad, he took his hoe and he cut that thing in two. And the leprechaun said, you know what? I don't know what this is, but I bet you if we cut it up and put it in our soup, it'll taste pretty good. So they took that strange thing home and they cut it up and they put it in their soup. And you know what? It was delicious. And they took that strange thing and they planted it in the ground. What happens when you plant something in the ground like that? more of that strange thing. And the leprechaun said, you know what, I think that I'll call this a... a potato. And from then on, they had baked potatoes, they had boiled potatoes, they had potato soup, they had mashed potatoes, they had French fried potatoes, they even had tater tots. It's all because of the leprechaun, but most of all, no one was hungry in the land of Ireland because of the potato. Now that is one story from around the world that kind of explain where the potatoes came from. Uh, and it's just a fun story that people share. <coughs> Excuse me. The next story I want to share with you comes from West Africa. Now, West Africa, they have a story that they usually have a character that is a trickster or it is someone that helps you teach a lesson. Now, a lesson can be something that's called a moral. So there's always something to be learned from the story. I'll see if you can guess what you learn or the moral of the story is with our friend, Anansi the Spider. Anansi has all kinds of stories. All kinds of stories with lessons and morals to learn. But then this story is called Anansi Goes Fishing. Do we have people? Uh, Nancy goes fishing. One fine afternoon, a Nancy the spider was walking by the river when he saw his friend Turtle coming toward him carrying a large fish. A Nancy loved to eat fish, though he was much too lazy to catch them himself. Where did you get that fish? He asked Tortoise and the turtle. I caught it today when I went fishing, Turtle replied. I want to learn to catch fish, too. I want to learn to catch fish, too, said Nancy. Will you teach me? Certainly, said Turtle. Meet me by the river tomorrow, and we will go fishing together. Two can do twice the work of one. But Nancy did not intend to do any work at all. Oh, Turtle is slow and stupid, he said to himself. I will trick him into doing all the work. Then I will take the fish for myself. But Turtle was not as stupid as Nancy thought. Early the next morning, Turtle arrived. Are you ready to get started, Nancy? he asked. Yes, Nancy said. I have been waiting a long time. I want to learn to catch a fish as well as you do. First we make a net, said Turtle. Net making is hard work. When I do it myself, I work and get tired. But since there are two of us, we can share the task. One of us can work and the other gets tired. Oh, but I don't want to get tired. And Nancy said, I'll make the net and you can get tired. All right, said Turtle. And he showed Nancy how to weave a net. Then he lay it down on the riverbank. Oh, this is hard work, and Nancy said. I know, said Turtle, yawning. I'm getting very tired. And Nancy worked all day weaving the net. The harder he worked, the more tired Turtle grew. Turtle yawned and stretched, and finally he went to sleep. After many hours, the net was done. Wake up, Turtle, Nancy said. The net is finished. Turtle rubbed his eyes. The net is strong and light. You are a fine net maker, Nancy. I know you worked hard because I am very tired. I am so tired I have to go home and sleep. Meet me here tomorrow and we'll catch fish then. 
next morning, Turtle met a Nancy by the river again. Today we are going to set the net in the river, Turtle said. This is hard work. Yesterday you worked while I got tired, so today I'll work while you get tired. Oh, no, 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 the Nancy said. I'd rather work than get tired. All right, said Turtle. Uh, so a Nancy worked hard all day setting the net in the river. Turtle lay on the riverbank getting so tired he finally fell asleep. Wake up, Turtle. Nancy said hours later, the net is set. I'm ready to start catching fish. Turtle yawned. Oh, I'm too tired to do any more today, Nancy. Meet me here tomorrow and we'll catch fish then. Turtle met Nancy on the riverbank the next morning. Oh, I can hardly wait to catch fish, Nancy said. That's good, Turtle replied. Catching fish is hard work. You worked hard these past two days, Nancy. I think I should work work today and let you get tired. Oh, no, 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 said Nancy. I want to catch fish. I don't want to get tired. All right, said Turtle. Whatever you wish. And Nancy worked hard all day pulling the net out of the river, and the turtle lay back getting very, very Nancy was to find a large fish caught in the net. What do we what do we do now? He asked Turtle. Turtle yawned. Now we cook the fish. Cooking is hard work. I think I should cook while you get tired. Oh no, 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 cried the Nancy. He did he did <coughs> excuse me. He did not want to share any bit of the fish. I will cook and you get tired. While Turtle watched, Nancy built a fire and cooked the fish from head to tail. That fish smells delicious, Turtle said. You are a good cook, Nancy, and you worked hard, I know, because I am very, very tired. Now it is time to eat the fish. When I eat by myself, I eat and get full. Since there are two of us, we should share the task. One of us should eat while the other gets full. What do you want to do? Oh, I want to get full, Nancy said, thinking only with his stomach. Then I will eat. Turtle began to eat while Nancy lay back, waiting for his stomach to get full. Are you full yet? Turtle asked Nancy. Huh, not yet. Keep going. Turtle ate some more. Are you full yet? No, keep going. Turtle ate some more. Are you full yet? Not at all, Nancy said. I'm as empty as when you started. That's too bad, said Turtle, <clears throat> because I'm full and the fish is gone. What? And Nancy cried. It was true. Turtle had eaten the whole fish. You cheated me! And Nancy yelled when he realized what had happened. I did not, Turtle replied. You did! You made me do all the work and then you ate the fish yourself. You won't get away from this. I am going to the justice tree. And Nancy ran to the justice tree and Warthog sat beneath its branches. Warthog was fair and honest judge. All the animals brought their quarrels to him. What do you want, Nancy? Warthog asked. I want justice, Nancy said. Turtle cheated me. He went fishing to get, we went fishing together. He tricked me into doing all the work and then he ate the fish himself. Turtle deserves to be punished. Warthog knew how lazy a Nancy was and he couldn't imagine him working hard at anything. Uh, did you really do all the work, he asked. Yes, and Nancy replied. What did you do? I wove the net. I set it in the river. I caught the fish, and I cooked it. That is a lot of work. 
you must have gotten very tired. Oh, no, said Nancy. I didn't get tired at all. Turtle got tired, not me. Warthog frowned. Turtle got tired? What did he do? Nothing. He did nothing? Why did he get tired, Nancy? I don't believe you. No one gets tired by doing nothing. If Turtle got tired, then he must have done all the work. You are not telling the truth. Go home now and stop making trouble. Warthog had spoken. There was nothing more to be said. And Nancy went home in disgrace. And it was a long time before he spoke to Turtle again. But some good came out of it. And Nancy learned how to weave nets and how to use them to catch food. He taught his friends how to do it, and they taught their friends. Soon, spiders all over the world were weaving. To this day, wherever you find spiders, you will find their nets. They are called spider. That and Nancy, he gets in trouble with all kinds of stories. And you can find a lot of those books at your local library, including a Nancy in the Moss Covered Rock. That is a very popular story as well. These stories, they get told and they get passed along and they change and sometimes they add things and they get a little more, um, a little more spectacle to them as they go along. And people like to share the stories. Now, this is a little different way, but in Egypt, people used to want to leave behind to something to tell their story. They would do hieroglyphics on the walls, but they would also build pyramids. And when they built the pyramids, they would fill the pyramids with things that they liked, things that were about them, things that would tell stories to the people when they would find these things later that told about their life. So we're gonna do something a little fun like that. You can come to the library and you can get a cardboard piece that looks like this. And it folds and it folds. And then there's a piece here that folds in. And you're gonna just take that in the inside and you'll make a pyramid. Now with this pyramid, you could tell your story. And your story are the things that are important to you, things that you like, things that you like to do, maybe things you like to eat, or fun things that say, this is about me. I'll show you an example. This is my pyramid, and it has all kinds of things on it about me, including my pet, Piper. I like to watch the movie, The Wizard of Oz. I love Dr. Pepper. I like the Muppets. I do theater, I do some shows and acting and directing. This is the last play that I directed. Um, I love roller coasters. I like to spend time with my friends, pizza, a lot of TV, I like to go to zoos. I love Halloween, Disney World, and my family, Star Wars, and of course, working at the library. So this is the pyramid of the story of my life, and you can decorate this however you want. You could do it with uh, magazine pictures, or you can have mom print out pictures like I did here of my family and me on a roller coaster. And you can put those on with glue. And then you can also add stickers and decorations however you like to decorate your pyramid to tell your story. Oh yes, and one final thing with this pyramid. Today's letter is G. You have all the letters now to find out what that magical word is to open up so you can earn your final badge Maybe not your final badge, but you can earn the badge for um, trying to guess what all the letters were. We have one more week of summer reading, so I hope you're reading lots of books and getting all the badges that you can. But thank you once again for joining me today, and I will see you next time.